Uh, Liv? What on earth are you doing? I'm trying to hear the tree rings, T. Dr. Sally taught us all about them today in class. Well, that's interesting, Liv, but, um, you know, tree rings aren't something that you can actually hear. They're inside a tree and tell people how old trees are. Really? Well, Dr. Sally mentioned that archaeologists study them. I thought they used their senses to find out about tree rings and how they can teach us about the past. Well... This tree is 400 years old. I mean, that's not really how that happens. Archaeologists use their own sight and touch to figure out how a tree represents a year of its life. And they use clues to see how the climate and the environment was at that time. In fact, we have a friend, Melina, here who's an archaeologist and has looked at a couple of trees. Hey, T. Hey, Liv. Hi, Hi Melina. What are you guys talking about? Well. T here was just telling me about how archaeologists like you know how to find out an item's age just by looking at it. You know, I'm gonna see what I can find around the lab and I'll be right back. You guys have some fun. Bye! Bye. Hey young scientists, remember last episode Melina was collecting things in the field? Well today she has some things to show me from her lab. What do you have Melina? I have these goat bones. So the way we're able to find the age of something like these bones or like a tree is by taking a closer look at the details. Ooh, tell me more. So we want to know the age of these goats, and we have to look at what teeth are here. Goats, like humans, have baby teeth. So when we have the baby teeth still in the mandible, we know that this goat was young. This one is probably about a year. When we get our adult teeth, we wear them down over time as we munch and munch and munch, which goats do a lot of. Definitely. So we look at the wear of the teeth, and then we're able to see that the wear indicates that this animal is about four to six years old. Oh my gosh, that's amazing that you can tell just by looking and, and feeling. Wow, that's so cool. We were actually talking about how tree rings aren't actually the sound from a tree, but an actual ring. Oh, I've looked at a couple of tree rings myself. Really? What do these tree rings look like? I want to use my sight and touch to find out more about trees. Well, I found this tree cookie here in Melina's lab. Oh, that's where you went? Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Melina, can we take this back to our lab and, and study it? Absolutely. That would be amazing. Thank you. That's a great idea, Liv. A piece of a real tree will tell us more about it its history than a fake one. Let's go explore and learn from nature. Bye guys, see you later. Bye, Bye. Melina. Hey young scientists, are you ready to make some tree rings? I am. I know I am too. Let's get started. So first things first, put on your safety glasses. Don't want to get anything in our eyes. Second of all, let's talk about the materials we need for today's experiment. So we're gonna be using different um, colored clay, two for each of us, as well as some straws, and then parchment paper to lay down um, as, you know, to keep our, our table clean. Yes. Um, and so yeah, here's one straw for you, one straw for me, and we're each gonna be using two different uh, containers of clay. You can use any sort of clay you can find at a local grocery store, craft store, whatever you can get your hands on. Um, beautiful. Okay, here's what we need for this fun tree ring activity. We've got different colored soft clay and a straw. Cool, now let's choose one color for the outer ring and one for the inner ring. Okay, what do you wanna choose? Um, <laughs> I don't know, I'll take this. All right? I'll take the light pink All right. for the outer ring and brown for the inner ring. Nice, and I guess I'll be taking orange and this nice purple, purpley color for my science club. These are science club for girls colors. They are. <laughs> science club for girls, science club university. <laughs> All right, good choices. Always good to go with orange and purple. Definitely. Now, let's mold the clay for the inner ring in a ball. All right. So. So yeah, my understanding is that we roll the inner ring into a ball and then we flatten it yes. to kind of create a little circle. Yes. So we're gonna roll it into a ball. Just like, like this. and how much clay should I use, T? Just like I think a little you bit. Use a little bit since this is the inner ring. Right. It's gonna get more as we go on. <laughs> All right. 
Oh, we didn't lay our paper down. We didn't lay our paper down. <laughs> Okay, so first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is lay down your parchment paper. <laughs> yes. Here you are. Thank you. All righty. Then you're gonna to wanna to roll one of your first colors of clay into a ball, like so. And then flatten it like this. Oh, oh might there stick to your hands a little bit, but that's all good. All right. Nice. All right, beautiful. And then the next step is to take your other color, correct? Yes. And we're going to create different rings by rolling strings um, of both of the colors. So we start out with this, with this inner ring um, color, and then we're gonna kind of go back and forth rolling either color into strings that we wrap around. This is very orange. So once again, I feel like we roll a little bit, but this time not into a ball, um, more like a, a worm, yeah. I'd say. Look at this, nice big worm. Big worm. And I'm gonna do three of each color. Um, just to create a nice sort of pattern we have going on. So take one color and then take another color and continue to roll these worms. So now I'm just going to make each of my strings a little bit more even, just to have consistency with the, the rings. But you know, tree rings are different sizes on actual trees, so it's okay if not everything is exactly symmetrical. This is really coming together. We have six tree rings now, three of each colors. Beautiful. And so what we're going to do is wrap uh, each of the colors around the center, uh, you know, alternating colors to create a tree ring, something that looks similar to our tree cookie here. All right. I might need to make them a little thinner to fully wrap, but it's fine. <laughs> Definitely a lot thinner. <laughs> I overestimated Same. how long they would have to be to wrap around the center. As did I, but that, that's, that's okay. okay. Trial and error, best part of that science. Is, that's another important part of science. Yeah. All right. And I'm kind of gonna flatten it a little bit just so there are less um, uh, rolls as opposed to just like flat um, on the surface, kind of matching the ball that we flattened earlier. Yes. And I also didn't think about how as it gets bigger, the pieces are gonna, we're gonna need slightly more clay. Right. So. Get it dangling. I, really, I, was, I wasn't thinking about, you know, the circumference of the tree ring. Neither was I. But it's okay. So we're some circumferencing now. Definitely. Some flattening. Wow. To really spread those rings it looks into really each cool. other. It does look really cool. And it, I will say, it does resemble 
this tree cookie that we got from Melina, Melina's lap. Thank you, Melina. Thank for, you, Melina, for the, the tree cookie. Wow, this is really coming together. We have six tree rings, three of each color. Great. Now that we have our tree rings assembled, we can use this clear straw as our borer. What's a borer? A borer is a tool used in archaeology to extract samples from different layers of soil. Oh, okay. So it helps archaeologists study the layers beneath the surface? Exactly. It can help us get what's called a core sample. A core sample? Yes, a core sample. That's when someone takes small portions of an object and looks at it closer. Oh, and how does this borer fit into that? Well, a borer helps us make a core sample to count tree rings. It's actually really good for the environment because we don't have to cut down a tree to look at the insides of it. Using tools like a borer helps scientists learn the age of trees, like these massive but important redwoods in California or bristlecone pines that are hundreds or even thousands of years old. And we can look at them and study them without doing them any harm. Oh, that's so awesome. It is awesome. Now back to the experiment. We are gonna be using our clear straws or our borers to push from the outer edge to the center of our clay tree slice. All right. Just pushing through each of the layers. Whoa. Oh. Try to keep it inside your tree so you can capture each clay layer. And then once you reach the center, what do we what do we do once we reach this, when we reach the center? Once we reach the center, we're going to gently push it back. Wow! wow. So in order to count the tree rings, we look at our outer color, which in my case is the pink one, and in Luke's case is the purple, and count the different number of bands. That is equivalent to the number of years that the tree is old. So we know that my purple or your pink band is one year of growth. So that means our clay tree is three years old? Yeah, oh, it is. Awesome. Well, this is exactly what archeologists do. They analyze the different layers to understand the past. So cool, we're learning archeology span even through clay trees. There are so many ways to learn about archeology. span These tree rings look awesome. I'm gonna use them to decorate. I support it. <laughs> These past few days, we've learned so much about archeology. span From our friend Melina in her lab, to digging up our own discoveries. It's been a blast. The best thing that we've learned is that archeology span is about discovering the past. I love learning about the past. I love working with it and bringing it all to you guys. And I'm so excited to continue with you all. Thank you so much for coming on this journey with us, young scientists. See you beyond the rings. Bye.